the effective cause of sale. Also had a phone call about it last week from one of my favourite watchers, uh, favourite viewers here of uh, Facebook Live. So thank you for that favourite viewer. Uh, let's talk about the effective cause of sale. Now there's been so much written about this. There's been court cases about this, high court cases about this, you know, from the about the meaning of the effective cause of sale. Uh, as far back as you know, 2001, when there was the you know major case Moneywood versus uh, Salomon nominees. Now, effective cause was said to mean more than just cause. So, and what does that mean? The issue explored was whether the actions of the agent really brought about the relation of buyer and seller, and the state of affairs that actually gave rise to the contract being exchanged, the property being settled, and there being a contract or right to the payment of commission. So it's been looked at in a number of cases, you know, back as far as 77, where it was Hookers versus Adams Estates, and a whole range of different uh, people have looked at this for many, 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 clearly decades. So whether the actions of an agent really brought about the relationship of buyer and seller will obviously be decided on the substance of each matter. So every matter is going to be different. But let, let's look at some rules of thumb without getting into the legalities of, of what will happen with, with each specific case. Generally, and obviously, uh, an agent will be found to be the effective cause of sale where they have introduced the purchaser who executes a contract for sale, which is ultimately completed. Easy, and that's just your, your easy response. However, when that causal chain is broken, the agent may not or will not uh, be entitled to commission at some point. Uh, so you look at something where the, an agent introduced a purchaser who eventually bought the property. Uh, the agents had, agent had, first agent, let's go with that one, had arranged for the contract to be signed uh, for that property. The contract had ultimately been rescinded when the purchaser was unable to obtain finance for the purchase. Subsequently, the purchaser signed another contract, but with a second agent. So the second agent on notice for this one. And uh, what happened this time was that the second agent had obtained finance, had been instrumental in obtaining finance for the purchaser, uh, and finance that that purchaser had previously unable been able been unable to obtain. So when the court ruled in this case, and this was a 1982 matter, uh, held that uh, the full court actually held that there was a complete cessation of the necessary causal relationship between the agent's actions and the sale which eventually took place, meaning that the second agent was the actual effective cause of sale. Even though that first agent had opened the door, had brought it right through, had gone off for an acceptance, had gone right through to signing a contract with the, you know, assisting the vendor and the purchaser to sign that contract, they actually hadn't got it across the line. Okay, so it, in this case, it's showing the necessary causal relationship uh, between the steps taken by the agent and the subsequent purchase by the purchaser. So, you know, there's lots of different scenarios that you could give on this. And, you know, we've, we've heard so many different scenarios of who opened the door and who's let them in and, and was it because the agent, uh, you know, and sometimes it's when the vendor and the agent, uh, sorry, the vendor and the purchaser start speaking and then knock the agent out. But it's about what you actually did. Was it more, did that person, did that purchaser actually only come to the table because you as the agent were advertising it and opening it and showing the property or would it have happened anyway? So there's a whole range of matters that, uh, that come into play with this because, you know, as we said earlier, every situation is going to be different. So, so it, obviously it, it's, all, it's all quite uncertain about what is effective cause and what, and what that actually means. But due to those broad ranges in there, it's actually um, really important that you take good notes, that you make uh, any representations you're making on behalf of the purchaser to your vendor, that there are records of that. And remember, you actually have to pass every offer to your vendor in writing. Obviously, you'll pick up the phone and you'll talk to them first. But then when you, you go through that, you'll actually keep notes and push that through. So, you know, when, there's, when there are so many facts and so many circumstances surrounding the claims for commission, you actually have to make sure that 
the judgment and the actions that are taken are based on all of the evidence. If you don't have that evidence in terms of what file notes, what emails you've sent, then you're not going to be able to, to prove any effective cause of SARS. So yet another reason that I will talk about the absolute need for you to keep good notes and good file notes, therefore uh, having some evidence to actually follow this story through if this happens to you. And unfortunately, it does seem to be quite a regular occurrence. So guys, good notes and make sure that you are following through to provide as much information as you possibly can to your vendor and to your purchaser.